Okay, you get one guess to figure out what's next. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and my next project the Airfix 148 scale P51D Mustang. Now before I get too far I want to send out a special thanks to my buddy Keith Short who uh, just can't seem to stop uh, hooking me up with kits. Keith, thanks a lot my friend. Get ready for the build. All right, for this project, as you can see here, we've got the Air Airfix 172 North American P51D Mustang. Now, this is going to be hopefully a somewhat quick look at the uh, box and contents, and then I'll talk a little bit about what my plan is for the uh, video series and for the kit itself. So as for the particulars, this is the Airfix 172nd scale North American P51D Mustang, number A01004, which was tooled in 2012. In typical fashion, it's got a bunch of warning stuff on the side in numerous languages. Um, information about the company itself. On the other side, we have some basic information about the aircraft, dimensions, and what these particular markings, which person and place uh, this aircraft served. Um, this is a skill level one, so it should be a very easy kit to build. Okay, in typical fashion for uh, Airfix kits. It's got warning stuff on one side, information about the company itself, an age recommendation. Um, the other side, we have some basic information on the aircraft, the dimensions of the kit, how many pieces there are, 53 in this case, and uh, which aircraft this represents. So this one was flown by, for the markings, marking options here, flown by 1st Lieutenant Spurgeon Ellington, Tuskegee Airmen, 100th Fighter Squadron, Ramatelli, Italy, December 1944. Uh, we have skill level of one and uh, airfix flying hours, whatever that is. Then on the back, we have a full scale, well, not a full scale, but um, a full representation of the markings that go with this kit um, with color callouts and information about the decals. The decals in this kit are by Cartograph, so that's a good thing. Having used Cartograph decals in air fixed kits before, um, they're really nice. This is an end opening box which is a pain for some people, but for me, it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the box. Now, another quick little thing. Um, apparently, in order to use, you know, the nomenclature for this aircraft, you have to be officially licensed by Boeing to use that. Um, heard about that not not too distant past, but uh, it's kind of interesting when you think about it, but just like using the word Jeep for vehicles and stuff like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, crack this open and take a look at the contents. So another quick note, some of you may be saying, hey, didn't you already do a review of this in one of your quote unquote short reviews where Keith Short, the guy who gave me this kit, Gives me some kits to do a review for him. Yes, I did, but I couldn't readily find it on my channel. So I figured since I'm going into it new and I'm actually building it for myself, uh, I'd kind of go over it again really quick. So it's too boring for you. Hopefully I'll remember to put chapters and you can skip through what you don't want to see. So here's the instructions. One, two, three, four, five different languages. 
and uh, more information about the aircraft. So these are fold out style directions. Um, we've got assembly instructions and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve languages on this one. Then we've got assembly icon instructions, uh, kind of explaining what each type of symbol means in the actual in, uh, build instructions themselves. And then we have just all the uh, parts and how they uh, how they go together and such. So I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, it does give you options on whether or not to have the flaps up or down which is kind of nice. Um, I think it also gives the option to build it gear up, which I think I will be doing on this particular kit. And then on the back, we have uh, stencil data location, which is for, would be common throughout the should be common throughout most of the uh, Mustang range. These are just the stencils themselves, not to be confused with the kit marking specific um, decals. So that's the instructions. Next up, we have the decals. Again, these are cartograph decals, which means they are of very nice quality. Uh, they seem to be very thin. They are in register, which means everything's lined up. Very nice crisp printing. Now some of these markings I will actually be painting. So like the yellow markings here for the wings, I will be painting those on as opposed to uh, um, using the decals. Also this red here, I'll probably be, well I won't probably, I will be painting that as well. So there you have it, some really nice decals. 100th fighter squadron so the first sprue we have here is sprue a and as you can see there are some parts missing here and that would be the fuselage halves i wanted to check something so i cut them off uh, to look at them but um the molding on it's really nice the panel line detail is good pretty pronounced so it'll be easy to do a nice panel line wash and stuff like that uh, just overall, the markings look really pretty nice. The markings, detail I should say. Uh, same here, not much to speak about in the way of flash. There's a little bit there. Some of these smaller parts, the sprue gates are kind of largish, so they kind of bleed off into the part itself. Uh, some more flash there in the uh, radiator intake scoop. But overall, not bad. Uh, there's a little bit of a an edge on the prop blades I'll have to deal with. But again, nothing really serious. Looks pretty good. So that is sprue A. Here is sprue B, which are the wings, flaps, uh, canopy, frame exhaust instrument panel now there is no detail on the instrument panel but there is a decal provided so that'll be nice um, that small I'm not worried about texture and stuff like that I just want it to look like an instrument panel and then we have the landing gear parts. Now I cut one of these off because I wanted to check and see how well it fit in there and it fits really nicely. So uh, all in all, really nice. Here's the evidence that I know I did this review because I will cut these bags for the clear parts open and then I'll tape it back up so the parts don't fall out. Um, these parts are really nice, very, very clear, doesn't seem to be too much in the way of distortion, which will be nice. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, overall looks pretty good. The, the gun sight, can't really tell because it's hard to make out detail on the clear. But once I get painted black, I should be able to tell. 
but uh, overall looks pretty good. All right, so that's all the parts. Oh, I forgot to mention, where is it? We do have a pilot figure and I will be using him because I'm going to make gear up canopy closed. So I'm really going to get to test my uh, somewhat limited painting abilities. Paint this little bloke. So as for the actual plan for this kit, so I am going to do it in these markings for the Tuskegee Airmen. I've been wanting to do an aircraft from the Tuskegee Airmen for quite a while, but for one reason or another, other things have come up and I haven't done it. Now I have a decal set in 172 for a uh, P-51 Bad Angel, which I did a 148 scale version of recently. And I was going to do that just so I could have two of them, one in 72nd and one forty eight. But after I looked at this, I thought, you know, there's a lot of color going on here. You've got the uh, um, anti-glare panel, you've got the red, you've got the yellow, and then, you know, the insignia and stuff. And it's a metal finish, so that'll be kind of cool. I haven't done too many in metal finish, but that'll be kind of nice. So that's the plan to do it in that marking option. Now, as far as the kit goes, I'm not going to do any aftermarket and there's not going to be much in the way of uh, modifications with the exception of filling in the panel lines. Um, I'm sure it's pretty well common knowledge. Some people may not know, especially newer people. But P-51s came from the factory with all of the rivets and panel lines filled in with putty. They were puttied, uh, lacquered, and were painted with a silver, like a high-speed silver paint. So it was not bare metal. It was, it was a painted finish, and then the fuselage was a bare metal. So that is going to be my plan. So I'm going to be filling in all this stuff, only the appropriate stuff, like the doors for the uh, uh, loading the ammo, those would not be filled in. Filler caps obviously would not be filled in. And once I get to that part of the build, I have some illustrations showing exactly where things were puttied and painted. So I'll talk about that when I get there. So that's the plan for the wings. Other than that, it's just pretty much going to be a stock kit right out of the box. Now, something relatively new to the bench is uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color lacquer-based paint. This here is super silver. Now, I used this on a recent um, build for the drop tank, and it is a very, very nice metal finish. Normally, I use the Vallejo Metal Colors, but in this case, I want to try the lacquer stuff. So this is what I'm going to be using, at least for sure, on the fuselage. I may use the metal color on the wings, but we shall see. Now, one thing to note, because of the way I'm going to be doing this with puttying and stuff like that, I'm going to be building it in kind of a weird order. So I'm not going to actually do a step-by-step, blow-by-blow build of this kit. Um, I'm going to talk about specific things I'm doing, like the wings, and how I'm going to uh, approach painting the wings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm going to keep it very simple and um, not get into a whole lot of minute, minute detail like I would for uh, um, a build directed more for beginners or at least people that haven't built very many kits so it's going to be more of a summary type deal so there'll probably be less episodes and uh, they probably won't be as long as my normal videos are so that is the plan for this kit so there you go that is the kit I'm going to be building and my plan for this kit so if you want to follow along, maybe hit the subscribe button 
and uh, notifications or whatever if you want to keep up on this build and see how it comes along or if you want to check out some of my other um, build videos. If you've had any experience with this kit, if you have any comments, hints, tips, anything like that, put them in the comments section down below. I would really be stoked. So, thank you for joining me here for the intro video, part one of the Airfix 148 scale P51D Mustang. Hope you'll tune in for the rest of the episodes. And as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.